I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I am a coronavirus researcher with over 20 years experience uh, growing and working on little coronaviruses. Uh, let's try and answer your questions. So uh, today's first question is from Chris. And uh, yeah, good afternoon. As it says in there, I did leave this until a little late. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you caught me. Yeah. <laughs> a conspiracy theorist friend of mine posted the following article today. And there's a link to something on Technocracy News, yeah, which sounds real legit uh, right off the start. Um, I was hoping you could uh, take a look and comment on it. Uh, in summary, it says that the WHO says that there's no evidence that wearing masks mitigates the spread of virus. Wow. Yeah. Somebody ought to tell the WHO that. Huh. <laughs> Are the quotes here accurate? Yeah. The answer is going to be no, but let's go look at the article because uh, this is some nonsense. All right. So let me pull this little screen down, and all right. So um, this is an article that uh, is supposedly by somebody called uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola, who is well known. Um, well, if you if you Google his name, the first thing that comes up with is either quack or fraud. I forget which, but it's not it's not what you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he's a big fan of natural medicine and a big uh, opponent of, I don't know, science in general, I think. So it's, it's he, he writes books um, and sells them to people. And um, yeah, so he's like a populist anti-science um, goofball. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what does uh, this goofball have to say? Um, so we scroll past the editor's quote, which is a gem. I'll leave that to you if you want to read that. Um, uh, let's see. And so it starts out with a clip of um, the uh, head of the WHO, uh, uh, Tedros. I forget his last name. I apologize, Dr. Tedros. Um, and uh, he's saying that we're not going to get back to a new norm, uh, to the old normal, because uh virus trend is going in the wrong direction in a lot of countries. Yeah, looking at you, America, among other countries. Uh, the Middle East right now has relatively low numbers, but per capita, just ridiculously high numbers uh, there. If you're, if you're looking at the charts and sorting by number per million, you have to resize the chart to see some of those. <laughs> They're really something. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. One problem in here is that there are little numbers at the ends of some words, which, if this was science, is how you would say, like, you know, sentence, 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 and the number one, it would say, go look at reference number one. You know, that's where I got this from. It's not, it's not me that's saying this. It's an actual reference. <laughs> in this article, they're just numbers. <laughs> I looked, there's nothing on the page. Um, it claims to be reposted from a Guardian article, but it just links to something that uh, talks about how black raspberries are... I forget why they're the best thing ever. They're really tasty, I gotta say. Yeah. We used to pick them all the time. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that's why I haven't got COVID yet. Yeah, you figure it out. <laughs> um, then it goes on to repeat some uh, things that, uh, that... I mean, there are Snopes pages debunking... Um, uh, one of the things is that the virus is, well, yeah, first of all, so I, I like looking at pictures of virus. This is one of the things that I do. And so it's saying that the beta coronavirus has a diameter of 60 to 140 nanometers. 60 is really small if you're talking about the virus and its spikes. But if you're going with just like a small on the really tiny side virus particle and just measuring to the membrane, I think you'd get away with that. Yeah. Um, to 140 nanometers, which yeah, it's on the large size. Uh, there are bigger ones, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but says then says this is half the size of most viruses, and I don't know what viruses uh, Dr. Mercola has been smoking, but yeah, <laughs> things like um, things that you would commonly get, like uh, polio or hepatitis A, something like that. These are usually smaller than coronaviruses. Things like the flu or um, uh, like a measles virus are about the same size as coronavirus and big ones like a rabies virus those, those are yeah those are bigger or like a like a giant pox virus or something like that maybe a large end herpes virus those, those would be bigger I don't know if they're talking about bacteriophage but I think it's yeah it's got a reference after it but it is again just a number it's the number three so <laughs> go ask the number three how big viruses are and he says it's 0.3 microns, so maybe that's where the number 
<laughs> three references coming from. Heaven only knows. Uh, oh, yeah, this stuff is just so incompetent. Okay, and um, then it goes on to say that N95 masks can't filter out fire-sized particles. Yeah, which is wrong, and you can. there's lots of papers out there that show that they do. And yeah, they're called N95 masks because they are the worst. The, their, their worst feature is 0.3 microns, about three times the size of a coronavirus. That is where they struggle. They're really good at smaller things, really good at bigger things. It's just that one little zone. And so to be an N95, you have to be certified that even though that's your worst possible feature, you gotta be 95% efficient at the worst place. Yeah. <laughs> and they're actually much better. They're way over 99% uh, on virus sized particles. Um, and some of the other uh, things that are out there debunking this uh, would also say that um, you don't find dry, loose virus particles just floating through the air because the virus comes out in a respiratory droplet. I mean, you know, viruses are, they, they come out of cells and cells are moist little things. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, the virus is going to be part of a droplet. The droplet's going to stay up in the air by a bit of evaporation. That'll sort of prevent it from falling as fast as it could. And it'll change in size. And I guess eventually the last thing before the virus just like plunks on the ground, you may just have a uh, virus on its own. But even then, it's great because your mask is going to filter them all out. So I don't know. It's um, This is all very deliberately or extremely incompetently misinterpreting, not misinterpreting, it's just lying about things related to science. And I think he's doing it to sell books and I don't know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> In a world with perfectly good comic books, I don't know why you would want to read one of these. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where the entertainment value is. There's certainly gonna be no scientific value if uh, this is an accurate specimen of Dr. Mercola's work. So there we go, yeah. Um, yeah, and it goes on and just says a bunch of dumb stuff. There's, um, there's nothing in here that, uh, is particularly, um, honest or well-intentioned or accurate. Yeah, which is to say it's badly intentioned by the look of it, uh, inaccurate, it's, you know, if somebody was mistaken, then chances are they'd be right some and wrong some, and they'd be reporting actual facts and try to relate them back to actual sources. But when you see somebody that's not doing that and they're only picking out the wrong stuff, and it's the wrong stuff that all goes together in this narrative that says that somebody's out to get you and, uh, yeah, you got to buy these uh herbal supplements to whatever. I don't know what magic they're supposed to perform, but uh, yeah, magic isn't science. Science isn't magic. Yeah, sometimes it looks like it if, yeah. <laughs> from certain perspectives, but it is really not. Um, and so, no, there's, uh, this is uh, just another bit of nonsense. I don't know that any of that would um, convince somebody who has bought this. Because in general, I think the people who are going for the conspiracy theories are taking the path of least resistance. It is really easy to just say, yeah, okay, I believe everything's a crock. I don't have to learn anything. Because no other knowledge required. All you have to do is pick one totally illogical point and stick to it. And uh, boom, yeah, you're the king or queen and uh, everybody else is wrong. And you get to tell them that forever. It's... Um, but uh, there's no there's no data, there's no learning, there's no checking, there's no, yeah, there's no validation process at all for uh, nonsense like this. It's just an attempt to sway opinion with uh, fiction. So there we go. Yeah, I think that's enough on this. Yeah, piece of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.